Welcome back to the channel and this is part two of our economy boat rod rebuild that we're doing. We're taking a Daiwa 20 to 30 pound class carbon cruiser boat rod that was a little worse for wear. All the guides were in sort of rough shape and the, uh, the whippings weren't all that great. Uh, so mainly because of that one broken guide I just decided um, that I was going to strip the rod down and just give it a cheap little rebuild. So in this second part we're going to put all the guides on uh, finish all the wrapping and get all the finished whippings epoxied. All my guides together and I put them in order like this so I can start at one end and work to the other end just so you don't get them mixed up. Start off by roughly putting the guide where you think it should go. I'm referring back to our little diagram we did in the first uh, in the first part. Just double check the guide spacing down from the tip ring. So 120 down from the tip there, perfect. Just a bit of uh, insulating tape, just to hold it in place. Now once the first wrapping has gone on, there will be a bit of giving it, and you will be able to reposition it slightly just to get it in the right place. And always work whipping in towards the centre of the guide, never whip outwards, always whip in towards the guide. And your whippings are just going to start and finish exactly like you did before. And like before, just pull it underneath. Give it a little burnish. Okay, then we'll um, take our tape off here. And before you continue, just have a look down the blank and just eyeball it up, just to make sure you're happy with everything in line. If you want, you can grab yourself a calipers and measure that and then you can look to see exactly where you're going to start and finish and start there. First of all, we need to have a cup of coffee, a Bakewell tart, or two, and you'll see why in a sec. Okay, so when we come to epoxy our rod, um, you need to have some sort of way to turn the rod uh, to ensure the epoxy dries nice and evenly around the rod. So you have a few options. You can just get a cardboard box, cutting a couple of V's in the top to create a little rod. And you can put your epoxy on and then just literally sit there continuously turning it until the rod has dried. Um, so there's better options. Um, so my dodgy little setup that I've had now for years and years and years, I'll show it to you. So you can see here it's just a, a simple little motor, cruisette or cruise, however you want to pronounce it. This works off the mains. Uh, this one turns at 5 rpm. God knows how many, I, think I must have had this about 20 years, I think. It's so like you can see, it's really, really plain and simple. Um, bit of wood there with a hole cut in it, where the um, where the motor is on the other side. Mounted there. Um, so if I turn it on. This is just a, like a plastic spigot that I epoxied onto the little um, spigot that comes out at the end of the motor. Um, so that's on there really firmly. And then you can you can just stick the end of your rod onto that. So that's just an old rod rest, a real cheap one. Um, 
hole drilled in there and I just stick that in there to support the other end of your rod. So handily enough then if we take a look in the uh, in the end of our boat rod here there's actually a small hole just in the end which is going to fit I think pretty well on our little spigot on our motor. We're going to use flex coat uh, high build epoxy resin. Don't do what I'm doing here and use a dodgy old brush that you've stolen from your partner's art box. And yeah, get yourself some nice new brushes. When you buy this particular brand of resin, it comes with two little empty syringes, uh, which really you need. Um, again, if you haven't got any and if you've just got the resin, you can buy little syringes cheap on eBay. Don't try and black it just by looking at it in a container and just pour, trying to pour out the equal amounts. It won't work. Sometimes you'll mix it up in a little container and it'll go off very, very quickly. You'll get halfway down your blank and you'll find it'll start going, start setting on you, start getting all stodgy. It's an absolute nightmare to get on the whippings. The beauty of using this, you get yourself a little lighter, warm up underneath when the resin's in there, when it starts getting hard, and very, very quickly, you, you will literally just have to show it the lighter like that and it instantly starts melting again and it gets back down to a very workable consistency. So you can use a little plastic cups, great if you just got one or two to do. If I'm doing a whole rod, I would get some of these. Um, I'm being a bit of a hillbilly here, obviously these ones are used. If you go to a baking shop or something like that, I'm sure you can buy some of these that haven't been used, uh, but I just get a baby wipe or something, just give it a little wipe out. They come out pretty clean anyway. Yeah, just have some um, paper towel to hand or some baby wipes or both, uh, some spare rags, that sort of thing. You will get drippages and spillages and you don't want to be able to clean it up straight away. So, yeah. So we're going to do three mil of each. Really look at it carefully. Be as accurate as you can. I usually find as well when I'm when I'm brushing away and you're like, you're going like that. I always find this part of the brush gets in the way. So what I always do is just snap it off. And then I use this end to stir everything up. And I just find this brush a lot easier to use when it's shorter. It's just full of epoxy and you've used it. You've got to throw it away. You can't you can't wash it out and reuse it. So uh, there's no harm in doing that. So we're not having a cuppa. We're just going to put a bit of boiling water in here. I get my resin and hardener for a few seconds. This will just soften them up. Sometimes you'll find one of them that can sometimes crystallize. Um, sometimes if you haven't used it for a while, you, you'll pull it out and have a look at it and it's all gone hard and crystallized and you think it's knackered um, it isn't all you have to do is pop it into some hot water like this and it'll it'll just come back to normal again like into a liquid state you don't need to give it too long it just and it just makes the measuring out process a lot more accurate here we go then three mil of each and you're good Down to three mil. Once you've mixed them up, obviously from that moment on, clock is ticking, so you don't really want to be dilly dallying around. Mixing. I'd mix it for a, a good minute, I'd say. Okay, I think we're ready now to get it on the rod. Okay, believe me, this is not the easiest thing in the world to show you but we'll do our best. Right, so when the rod's turning, you just need to initially just get it on there. You wanna cover right over the, I normally go a few millimeters over the end of each wrap. Make sure where this is the tricky bit when you have under whippings is getting right underneath that foot of the guide. You really want to get it right in there, filling up all those gaps.
just come in to check. It's been a good few hours now. It's been about three, three, four hours. It's been drying, something like that. Top little tip for you. When you come to check your rod, <laughs> every part of you will want to touch a, a, one of your whippings to see how dry it is or how wet it is. You finished the last coat or the last, the last mix or the last batch and you put your brush down. Instead of throwing this away, just remember to keep it. Just leave it on the side. And then when you come to check on your rod, you can obviously just check on this. And then instead of having to touch that or being tempted to touch that, you can just see how dry this is. And that will obviously let you know how dry that is. So as you can see, there's still, um, although it's uh, well on its way to becoming set, it's dry in a treat. It's not, not there yet. So uh, I'm just going to leave it going round just in case. Okay, so the next day, uh, we're all completely dry now. Uh, see if I can get any focus for you. All dried off a treat. I'm really happy with this. So uh, if I wasn't filming it, probably wouldn't have taken very long at all, to be honest with you. And for what it costs, just the cost of the guides, essentially, because I had all the other parts. Okay, if you haven't done any rod building before, then yes, you'd have to buy some resin and and uh, a motor, <laughs> maybe. But, you know, um, you buy a bottle of that, a couple of bottles of that resin, and it lasts you a good few rods, so uh, it's quite cost-effective. Uh, same with the thread, really. You can buy, find some bargains on eBay, buy, buy yourself a great big spool of it, do loads and loads of rods out of it. Um, yeah, we're very, very happy with this. Uh, it's come out okay, rescued a rod, and I look forward to using this uh, next week now, yeah, we're out in the boat, so you'll see this in action hopefully, catching some fish, some smooth hounds and rays with a bit of luck on the Lorna Dune. Thanks for sticking around, I know this is a bit of a long video, but I hope it's of use to some of you anyway, uh, hopefully spurred you on to maybe having a go at, at doing a bit of rod building yourself if you never have before. Uh, it's not something to be scared of, it's just a... Uh, just give it a whirl, give it a crack. So thank you very much. Uh, say a bit of a break from the norm for me, this. Uh, I'm not going to do loads of things like this. It's normally going to be fishing and cooking. Um, but if you enjoyed it, please like, hit subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers all.